Welcome to Rogers & Associates. We're pleased and proud to introduce you to our financial advisors and to offer insights on how you can benefit from their expertise. And we're so happy today to have with us Erica Ekman. And she's a retirement expert in planning. And there's a lot of planning that needs to go into retirement. The latest figures say that folks can expect to live three decades. That's 30 years after their retirement. Well, what does the data show us? How well are Americans in general planning for retirement? Unfortunately, um, according to a recent survey that was done by the Department of Labor, fewer than half of American households have actually calculated what their retirement spending needs will need to be. In 2014, um, the same survey showed that 30% of individuals who had access to a defined contribution plan through their employer were not taking um, advantage of that plan. And what a mistake, right? It is a mistake. Over the cost of your life, working life, I should say, what is that going to cost you? It's going to cost you money, additional money that you can spend in retirement. And the minimum what you should be doing is many employer plans match up to a certain percentage and at least the minimum you should be contributing what they are going to match because that is free money that is coming to you. No one wants to leave free money on the table, right? Correct. At what age should you start planning for retirement? As soon as possible. So for individuals coming out of college and going into the career field, um, entering into a 401k plan is important and it should be high priority because the earlier you start to do it, it becomes a habit. And in your 20s, when you start saving $100 per month, each decade that you wait, that number triples. So by the time you would reach your 30s, if you have not started to save, it's now 300. Now you wait till your 40s, now you're getting to $900 a month. So the earlier you start to save, the better it's gonna be in the long run. Those kind of numbers put it in stark relief to think that that's how much more you'd have to save if you hadn't started when you were young. What about for folks who are more in uh, sort of the, the 50 and over age group, but primarily that 50 years old? You're still paying for kids in college. You're still paying your mortgage. Uh, you're, you still have life's expenses that come up. Can you still save for retirement? And if so, how does Rogers & Associates help you do that? You absolutely can still save for retirement, and this is where developing a financial plan um, becomes very important. How do you know how much you need to be saving if you haven't sat down and calculated everything? You, you don't have a roadmap to your retirement. And by sitting down with us and letting us um, go over your financial, your financial overview, it will allow us to give you recommendations on where you should be saving or um, what you should be doing to get to where you need to be. And is there a standard number uh, by which you would measure if you have enough money saved for retirement? Is there sort of a, an industry standard of X amount of dollars for you know, you know A, a lot years? of people have heard that you need a million dollars um, saved before you can retire. Um, and many times that number is individualized. There are people who may be used to earning $150,000 and living a more lavish lifestyle. There are individuals who may have made a more moderate income of forty, fifty, or sixty thousand dollars, where their lifestyle um, is not as lavish, and they might not need as much in retirement to fund their needs. So that is all individualized. And when we sit down with clients, you know, it's the first step is to listen and to learn what their goals are. Could you give us an example of how you might have helped a client with a particular dilemma with their retirement? I recently had a client who, she's 64 years old and she's decided that she would like to retire. Um, she does not have any pension income and the only thing that it is going to be available to her is um, her widow benefits from Social Security. and. Retiring at 64, it leaves a year gap in there that she's not going to be covered under any medical benefits. Therefore, she's going to have to go out into the health care exchange. Um, she had actually come into my office and had already met with Social Security to um, 
get the ball rolling on starting to collect her husband's um, benefits through Social Security. And when we actually sat down um, and discussed everything, we realized that was not the best course of action for her. Actually postponing that and delaying that um, and actually taking income from the portfolio that she currently has um, would actually allow her to get health care credits so that she was going to be paying a very minimum amount for health care for the next year um, prior to being able to go on Medicare. Well, thank you so much, Erica, for sharing your insights today. We appreciate it. And if you'd like to learn more, you can follow Erica's blog on the Rogers & Associates website. Thanks so much for joining us.